Nag, nag, nag. Covenant, you're calling Raven. Payback time. Turn on! Come with me if you want to live. You just don't turn it off! Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema, where we talk about movies of the past that you know and love. And welcome to my review of The Gauntlet. Yes, we're doing another Clint Eastwood flick here. One I've never seen. This was a first time watch. And let me tell you, I loved it. I thought this was such an enjoyable, fun ride. Another outing with Clint Eastwood and Sandra Locke. It was way better than I expected because I didn't know anything about this movie. I just knew it was another cop movie. Was I expecting something as good as Dirty Harry? No. Hell, if it was good as The Enforcer, I think I would have been happy. So I was pleasantly surprised about this flick. So let me know in the comments below what you think of The Gauntlet. Do you like it? Don't you like it? All that stuff. And we'll have a great conversation talking about The Gauntlet. So the Gauntlet was released in 1977, directed by Clint Eastwood and starring Clint Eastwood, Sandra Locke, Pat Hingle, and William when a hard but mediocre cop is assigned to escort a prostitute into custody from Las Vegas to Phoenix so that she can testify in a mob trial, but a lot of people are literally betting that they won't make it. So I did really enjoy the story in this one, and it's a story we've seen many times in film before, and it won't be the last, most likely. I mean, a character taking one character, having to transport them to somewhere else, and they're really at odds with each other, and then they just really grow to like each other by the end. So really good character development in this one. Like the execution of this one was really well done. I thought I wasn't expecting this kind of character development in this movie. And it was a fun, fun ride that you go on. I mean, not to take it too seriously, even though there are moments of really good tension in the film, there's good action in the film, all that stuff we're going to get into. The tone of the film is really great. It's got tension. It's got humor. It's got drama, but they're never colliding with each other. Where None of it feels out of the place. That's just Clint Eastwood's directing really on point in this movie, knowing when to uh, balance all those tones and still give us a fun action thriller. So we start this movie off with Clint Eastwood's character, Ben Shockley. Now how he differs from Dirty Harry is that Dirty Harry was very popular and he was the, he was the top dog on the force, cracked all the big cases. Even though he was rough around the edges, he did his job good. He did his job well. I really like the story of Injustice here, doing what's right, redemption. Clint Eastwood's character is a real redeemable character. So when we first meet him, we see that he's a drunk, doesn't care about much, but does his job. Apparently always gets the job done. So he's assigned to pick this prisoner up, bring him back to Phoenix, and then the police commissioner will take this prisoner from there. We later find out when Clint Eastwood's character and Sandra Locke's character get closer together that, you know, Ben Shockley was a, a guy who was full of dreams at one time, wanted to be the best cop he could be, wanted to crack the big cases, but he never got to that. Wanted to have the wife. He never got the wife. He never cracked the big case. He never got to be the policeman that he saw in his dreams. You know what I mean? And this situation happens where, all he wants to do is bring her in because that's the job he was sent to do. Doing just to do something important. And I like that. That's a real redeemable character. There's hope at the end of this. You know what I mean? You're clinging on to hope. You want this once you once you see his character, his layers being peeled back more and more and more. It's really like that and how the character's more than what he seems. And that's a running theme. Characters being more than what they seem. We meet Sandra Locke's character, who's a key witness to the mob. And so Everyone's after her, and I absolutely love the redeemable character of her and how they get closer together throughout this movie and how we find out she's actually very educated. She's got like a degree and something we find out and that she's the one who's a step ahead of Clint Eastwood, figuring what's happening to them, figuring that, that he, you know, Clint Eastwood's been set up by his own police commissioner and all that kind of stuff. And I love the attitude she brings to this character. This is really was my Favorite Sandra Locke character so far. I absolutely loved her in this movie. I just love how witty and smart, charismatic she was. She, you know, this, she's really foul mouthed. She won't take shit from no one. And she's just, I just love that about her character. I love how they start out with each other, just hating each other, where Clint Eastwood says, I just got a job to do to take you to Phoenix, and that's it. They just start learning a lot more about each other, and then they learn to respect each other, which leads into loving each other, really, at the end of this. We get this one scene on a train where Clint Eastwood's jumped. Guys are just beating the hell out of him, and the way she gets these people off him, she offers herself, so to speak, and they start 
raping her. They're ripping her clothes off and stuff. And it's, there's a lot of tension. It's dramatic, but she really like sacrifices herself in that moment. And then it allowed Clint Eastwood to break free. And then he kicks everyone off. There's a fight scene, kicks everyone off this train. And right there is a turn in the movie with these two, where these two start coming closer together because what she did for him and what he he does for her. So I, I just really liked that that scene. And it has some great action sequences in it. There's a lot of chase stuff in this. Like this is a people on the run. These two people on the run are chasing a lot of chase action scenes. Clint Eastwood's on a motorcycle and he's being chased by this helicopter. And I thought this sweet sequence was really good. It really reminded me of like um, Lethal Weapon where they're, the helicopter's chasing the the car through the desert and lethal weapon. This this reminded me of that. Obviously, this was a decade earlier, though, right? But I thought it was really filmed well. I thought Clint Eastwood did a great job with the wide shots, you know, really moving the pacing along. And the movie is paced really well. Like, for a 1977 movie, this movie got really good pacing to it. The performances are really good. Clint Eastwood's really good, as always. He brings charisma. But I just love how he's, you can tell this is not Dirty Harry. Just from the right, from the get-go, when he's starting to walk and everything, he walks different. He carries himself different. He's still a tough-nosed cop, but I found him a little bit more vulnerable, and there's a little bit a little bit more depth to him, I find, if you watch this movie and just the original Dirty Harry. But I love how Clint can do that. His mannerisms change just slightly. Just slightly to give you enough that, hey, this isn't, we're not made, this is not Dirty Harry here. You know what I mean? And Sandra Locke, like I've always said, I liked how her attitude and everything like that. But one thing I really loved about her in the final moments of this movie where Clint Eastwood gets shot all the hell, you know what I mean? And it looks like he's ready to die. And they do a good, a good job with him, you know, almost passing out. And instead of, you know, her just crying her face off, she gets angry. She's just like, you son of a bitch get up you son of a bitch and then he just comes back with nag 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 absolutely love it they get up they walk away at the end <laughs> bravo great way to end the movie such a fun ride love the the music going on through this saxophone little bluesy kind of music going on really feeling that the sorrow of the character at the beginning of this you know what i mean you know, down in the dumps kind of thing now we find out that our this police commissioner blade lock set up Clint Eastwood because he was expendable. He wanted to get rid of the girl because the police commissioner is the villain the whole time. He is the one that the girl has something on and he wants to bring both of these people down. Now you see that coming a mile away, man. You just, you know, it's the police commissioner because he's the only one who's had contact with Clint Eastwood's character. So I thought that was very predictable. Maybe in 1977, it wasn't as much maybe because we've seen so many movies like this. And but I did start thinking Pat Hinkle's character, it plays Clint Eastwood's kind of ex-partner who's gotten a promotion. And I actually thought he was going to be the one who turns on Clint Eastwood or there was going to be a double twist. There is going to be an extra twist, but he just ends up getting killed, which just pisses Eastwood off near the end there. And oh, my goodness, how much ammunition they probably used in this movie when they shoot the bus up. Or they're just they're just you know they're shooting the shit out of the bus bullet holes all the way through it the only thing i don't understand really is why clint eastwood was driving so bloody slow i guess because he got shot in the leg and everything like that but i i thought there's still still a fantastic ending though that's really my only really negative really is that this police commissioner you could see it coming a mile away but you still enjoy this ride we're going on, right? Because it's just a great fun ride. So I'm going to give the gauntlet from 1977 a solid B. But what about you guys? Let me know in the comments below what you think of the gauntlet. Have you seen it? All that kind of stuff. We'll have a healthy conversation in the comments on the gauntlet. Are you like me? Maybe you've only watched it recently for the first time. Let's have a great conversation about that. And if you like reviews like this, Wait to the end card. I'll put related reviews so you can go down the rabbit hole, go through the channel, all that kind of stuff. This was a lot of fun, guys. I really appreciate you watching this review. If, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, share the videos. It really goes a long way. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will see you next time, and I will see you in the movies. Cheers.